Thank you so much uh, again uh, uh, for invitation to be a part of this uh, meeting and dear participants. First of all, I would like to convey congratulations on behalf of the primate of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, His Beatitude Metropolitan Epiphany of Kiev and all Ukraine and wish us all successful work. Uh, thank you also for the invitation and I hope for good results of our meeting. First of all, I would like to note that Ukraine has been at war since February 20, 2014, more than eight years, when Russia launched a military operation to occupy Crimea. After that, he intended to use his proxies to create a fake state, Novorossiya, uh, formation from Kharkiv on the north of Ukraine to the Odessa in the south of Ukraine, and to force Ukraine to change our political system to confederations that would be effectively controlled by the Kremlin. These plans were not successful due to Ukrainians' resistance, but Russia did not give up its desire to implement them. As a result, a major Russian aggression began in February this year, affecting millions of people, as, as was noted, and treating in Europe and the world with World War III. From the very beginning, our church has clearly identified Russia as a perpetrator of aggression. This is important because if this is no correct, di correct diagnosis, treatment is impossible. Unfortunately, even now, not everyone understands that the cause of the war is not uh, uh, from Ukrainian side, that uh, some is not uh, some legitimate interest of uh, or rights of Russia, uh, but reason is that Russia's leadership wants to restore the imperial formation, a hybrid of the Tsardom and the Soviet Union, and the very independence of Ukraine, our unique identity, our desire to return to our historic home of civilization, to the family of the free peoples of Ukraine, of Europe. All this is not acceptable, uh, unfortunately, to Russian leadership. As a church, we are called to speak the truth. We do not interference in political matters, but we cannot remain silent when our people are suffering. What is uh, the church's response to the current large-scale aggression? First, prayer and the worship. People now feel much more in need of spiritual support than in peace time. Our church, throughout worship, throughout preaching, throughout live broadcasting of services, for those who cannot be personal, uh, pre personally present at the service, supports the spirits of the people, helps to overcome these challenges. Second, support resistance to aggression. Our priests, first of all, our priests as a chaplains are close to the military forces performing fun functions typical of military chaplains in different countries. We bless the protection of our people, our freedom and our democracy, and it is important for soldiers to feel this spiritual support. Third, charitable activities. Our church both directly collects and distributes charitable assistance to the victims uh, of aggression uh, and attracts assistance from our partners. The Orthodox Brothers from Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople and uh, uh, the Church of Greece helps us a lot. We also receive help and assistance from Catholic communities, from Protestant churches, food, clothing, hygiene items, all these in 
constantly needed, especially near uh, frontline areas. There will also be a long-term work to help rebuild housing, uh, uh, destroyed housing in the cities and villages affected by Russian shellings. Our church has launched uh, such program and the first st uh, steps of reconstruction is already being prepared. Fourth, assistance to internally displaced persons. Millions of our citizens have been forced to move uh, to more peaceful regions of Ukraine and abroad. At their places of res uh, residence, they need adapt uh, adaptation and support, and we are trying to provide it. With the help of partners, our uh, charity foundation, Elios, is opening three shelters for uh, women, victims of violence, where they uh, can be rehabilitated. Fifth, unfortunately, at least four priests of our church were killed by the occupiers. Uh, families of these died priests uh, are being helped. Six, our priests who remained in the temporary <laughs> occupied territories really are in danger. In danger. They need support and protection from the threat of arrest, torture, and intimidation by uh, Russian uh, intelligence and uh, Russian uh, uh, military forces. Seventh, Ukraine has had a council of churches and religious organizations for over 25 years, uh, which include our church, uh, 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 Catholic, uh, Protestant churches, as well the representatives of Jewish and Muslim community. By consensus, we have adopted many state statements against Russian aggression, which can be uh, found in English on the website of this council. You, and the uh, uh, president mentioned uh, uh, churches, uh, 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 German Lutheran Church and uh, Refor uh, Reformed Church in Transcarpathia. Uh, these two churches are full members mm -hmm. of our old Ukrainian Council of Churches and Religious Organizations. Ukraine in general and the religious community in particular need urgent help now and at all possible levels in order to protect uh, ourselves from aggression and uh, uh, the consequences of aggression. But long-term reconstruction programs will also be needed, uh, uh, especially on the uh, uh, deoccupied, uh, on the freed territories. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, I'm ready to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you.